Hey, this is Eric, and welcome to our session today on excellent extensions for Google Chrome. Before we get into this session, a little bit of housekeeping. First of all, there is a resource document you can get to that has all of the information we're going to be exploring today. That's at bit dotly slash Kurtz dash ext for extensions that will get you to a document that looks like this this document has everything in it that we're going to be exploring here during the session uh, certainly feel free to uh, bookmark this or add it to your drive or make a copy if that makes it easier for you whatever you need to be able to follow along again bit dotly slash Kurtz dash ext Awesome. All right. Well, with all that said, let's go ahead and talk about what we're looking at in this particular session. So this is going to be a session on Chrome extensions. And we're going to start off with some basic introductory content about extensions. So we're talking about how to find extensions, how to install extensions, how to pin extensions, how to use them, how to manage them. But the majority of the time, a big chunk is going to be recommended extensions. I do try to uh, maintain a pretty big list of uh, extensions that we use throughout the schools that, that I work with. Um, and we're going to look at that list and pull out a, a handful of those to dive a little bit deeper into and take a look at. Now, having said that, I want to learn from you too. So I would love to hear what are your favorite extensions. I'm sure my list is missing some things that I should have on there. So I do have in the agenda document there is a linked sharing document. So I try to do this with all of my documents, all of my sessions right below my presenter info. I typically include a sharing document um, as well. And if you click on that link for the sharing document, that will open up that document. Uh, this is a editable document, so you'll be able to type right into this document. So even though you may be, you know, watching this as a recording, you know, much later in the future, I still would love for you to <laughs> add things into this document. That is wonderful. Uh, and so what I would encourage you to do is uh, let us know what are your favorite extensions. What should I add to the list? What don't I have? that I should put in there. Um, and if you don't mind, please feel free to include, you know, what it does. How do you use it? What are the benefits or any tips you have about those extensions? Uh, hopefully in the future, as I do this session, um, I will be including some of your recommendations in there as well. All right, well, let's get on into it then. So we're going to start off with, again, some of the basics of how to find and install and use extensions. Everything I'm going to mention here goes right along in order here. So later on, if you need to uh, follow along in the document, you can get to all of those things here as from finding extensions to installing extensions, pinning and using and managing. All that is in the document there. All right. So first of all, where do we go to find extensions? Well, uh, we're going to go to the Chrome Web Store. And uh, the link for that is chrome.google.com slash web store. I'll go ahead and head on over there right now, pop that open. And when we get to the Chrome Web Store, this is where we're going to be able to find just loads and loads and loads of extensions that we can install and use in our Chrome Web Browser. Now, when you get here, there's a couple of ways to navigate around. I mean, if you want to, feel free just to scroll down and uh, you may find something that looks interesting to you just by what's highlighted on the main page. And if so, that's perfectly fine. That is fantastic. Um, on the other hand, if you have a specific need in mind, you can use the categories over here on the side to say, you know, I'm specifically looking for some extensions to help with accessibility, for example, or I'm looking for some productivity extensions. Uh, that would allow you to be able to narrow down as well. Or if you want to go up to the top, there's a, a search box and you can simply type in, maybe you're a math teacher and you're looking for some math extensions. You could type in uh, a search term and that will bring up some key extensions and you can click more extensions to see all of the extensions that are matching that particular uh, search term that you have typed in there. Now, another possibility is your school may have some extensions that are recommended. And so if you do have that situation below uh, the extensions here, there's going to be a spot that says for your school. And if you click on that, that would list then the extensions that are recommended within your school district. And it could be that your school district um, says, okay, you're only allowed to install these extensions. That's possible. It could be an allow list situation, or this could just be recommendations. As always, 
Talk to your tech folks if you've got any questions about that. Are you allowed to install any extension? Does it just have to be ones that are in the approved list? Uh, but whatever the case, this is where you're going to go when it is time to find and install an extension. All right, so let's go ahead and pick an extension to install and show you what that looks like. Uh, for our example today, I'm going to use one called Post Light Reader. Uh, this is an extension that cleans up web pages, that rem it removes distracting elements so you can focus on just what's important to read. It can be very helpful for students who may be easily distracted by uh, unnecessary information on a page. So let's say I want to check out Post Light Reader. I'll go ahead and just type in that name post light and that should get me there there we go go ahead and give a click on post light reader and that brings me to the page where i can install this now before you install it's it's a good idea to check things out first. Uh, uh, make sure this is an extension that uh, is well reviewed. Uh, see if there's any particular concerns about it before you dive right on into it. A lot of things we can explore. So for example, we have the overview down at the bottom where it explains what this extension does. Like we mentioned, this one clears away the clutter on web pages. It removes ads and distractions and things like that. Um, we'll get a couple of uh, quick shots here to show us what that looks like. And then across the top, we're going to have some useful information here as well. We've got the star rating as to how well rated it is, how many users are currently using this particular tool. And then we've got our reviews. And it's always good to check through and see what are people saying about this, you know, and not a bad idea to, to read quite a few and see, okay, you know, what are people finding that they like? What are they finding that they don't like about this? Uh, there also is a support tab. If there are questions, Questions that people have posted. This is a place where you can see those as well. So number of things you can look at before you go ahead and install an extension. And I would certainly encourage you to always do that first. And again, if you ever have questions, check with your tech folks as well. So let's say it has passed the test and we're like, okay, this sounds like this could be a useful extension. What do I do? Well, what you're going to do is click on the Add to Chrome button to install the extension. Let's go ahead and run through that process. So I'm going to come up here and click on Add to Chrome. It's going to ask for permission. So we'll say, yep, I do want to add this. And sometimes it'll just install straight away. This one sure did. <laughs> other times you may get some other pop-ups that ask you a couple of questions. In this case, boom, very quick, very easy, that installed. And so now if you take a look up here in the top right-hand corner, you will see I have a new icon up here. And that is the icon for the post light reader. It looks like a rocket ship up there. Now that's where your extensions are going to go. Up in the top right-hand corner, you can see I've got several extensions already installed and active. That is where you're going to find the, the extensions that you have installed. So Post Light Reader uh, has been set up for us now. Now, once you do get it installed, though, I would encourage you to also pin it. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. Uh, you can have a lot of extensions installed, but not necessarily view them all at one time. Like, take a look back up in the top right-hand corner and hmm, where did my rocket ship go? I know it was just there a moment ago. I just installed Postlight, but now that I'm looking up there, I don't see that extension anymore. Well, that's because just because you've installed something doesn't mean it's going to be displayed up in the top right. Instead, if you click on the little puzzle piece icon up in the top right, that'll give you a drop down showing all of the currently installed uh, active extensions that you have. And what you can do is you can just decide to pin the ones that you want to see all the time. I think that's really useful. I would, if I've got something installed, I, I want it pinned because I don't want to forget that I've got it installed. I don't want something running unnecessarily. Uh, and if it's not pinned, I may not even realize I've got that extension installed. So what I would do is come up here and click on the puzzle piece and notice that Post Light Reader currently does not have the pin filled in. So if I click on the pin, there we go. Now it is pinned, and I'll always see that up there in the top right-hand corner. So definitely encourage you to do that for any extension that you install. So how do we use the extension now that we have it? Well, okay, now that we've got the extension installed, uh, most of the time, uh, it's 
pretty much a matter of just clicking on it. Now, that's not always the case, and we're going to see a lot of other examples here in the session, and sometimes it's a right-click on this, or it's a select something and then click on that, but eh, for the most part, most extensions, you're just going to give a click on them to launch them. So in this case, let's try out Post Light Reader. So what we're going to do is let's bring over Dogo News. So this is a, a kids' current event article website. We're going to be using uh, Dogo News quite a bit throughout the session, as is one of the examples as I'm testing out some of the extensions here. Uh, but let's say I come in and I want to read about uh, a 3D printed edible cheesecake. That sounds fantastic. Uh, I can't wait till I get such a printer that I can just print out a cheesecake anytime I need one. That sounds great. Well, let's say I come and I want to read this article as a student. Now, Dogo News is a great site. I, I, I love it. It's a fantastic site. But sometimes it can get a, a, a little cluttered. You, you, know, you may find some ads on it. You might find some links to other articles down below. I think there's a whole comment section and sometimes that can be a little distracting when you get all the other things going on on the page. So to use a tool like Postlight Reader, all I'm going to do is simply come up and give a click on the rocket ship icon there for Postlight Reader to activate the extension. Let's try it out. Give it a click. It's going to open up Postlight Reader or say, yep, let's get started. And that's it. There we go. That's what the extension has done. It has taken that page and it has just cleaned it up. So now we are viewing the same content, but in a much cleaner manner. And we can make some adjustments here. There's a little gear you can click on. You can switch the text size from small to medium to large. You can change the font face and you can also change whether it's a light theme or a dark theme, whatever works best for you. So this is a great way for you, for your students, for anybody to be able to clean up uh, the web page that they are uh, uh, reading and be able to focus on just the core content, just the most important stuff. When I'm all done, we can just click to exit back out of that. And there we go. It'll shoot us right on back over to Dogo News, uh, just like it was before. So that's the gist. That's the main idea behind finding an extension in the Chrome Web Store, installing that extension, pinning the extension, and then using the extension. All right, so with that said, let's talk about managing extensions now because obviously this could get fun. <laughs> you could install a bunch of extensions because there are so many great ones I'm going to be showing you today and so many more in my big list and so many more that you're going to find just by browsing the Chrome Web Store. So here's the thing. As much as I love extensions, there are some negatives. One is, well, they use up memory on your computer. When an extension is showing up here in the top right or even in the puzzle, if, if, I mean, if you click the puzzle button and you see an extension here, that means it's running. Even if you're not clicking on it, it is using memory. It is an active extension. And if you get enough of those, well, yeah, it could start to slow down your computer. I've seen folks with, you know, 30 extensions installed and the computer's just crawling because of that. So it's best not to have that many extensions running at any one time. So if you're not actively using it, you probably should not have it uh, have it active so that it's going to be using up memory. So what do you do about that? Well, I mean, one option would be, I mean, I mean we, we could uninstall these extensions. We could say, well, I'm not using it right now, so I'm going to remove it. Well, phew, that's a lot of work because then you got to reinstall it. And so here's the thing. There's actually an extension to help us manage our extensions. How about that? <laughs> There's an extension called Extensity. And Extensity is uh, absolutely hands down one of the most important extensions you should have. Basically what this does, it's an extension that will show you every extension you have installed, it will let you turn them on and off. So if it's turned off, yeah, it's installed, but it's not going to use up any resources. It's not using up your memory. It's not going to slow down your computer. Now, I, in fact, have Extensity installed. When I click on Extensity, you'll see I've got quite a number of extensions. I've got a lot of them here. And if those were all active, oh my gosh, what a mess that would be. I'd have so many things running. It would really slow things down and probably, you know, uh, interfere with each other as well. So here's the idea. Let's say I'm like, okay, I, I love the post light reader extension. I think that's fantastic, but eh, I don't need to use it right now. So it really doesn't need to be running right now. All I need to do is click on extensity, find post light reader in that list. There it is. And just click on it. When I click on it, there we go. 
it's not uninstalled, it's just deactivated. And so I'm not gonna see it up here, it's not gonna be in the puzzle piece, it is deactivated. To use it again, I'm gonna to have to come back to Extensity, find it, and then click on it again, and that will reactivate it, it's ready to go. But we're not reinstalling it or uninstalling it, we're just deactivating and reactivating it. And I'm gonna be doing that throughout the whole rest of the session <laughs> because uh, I'm gonna show you a bunch of extensions and I didn't want them all running already. So I will be turning extensions on and off all the way through the rest of the session. But Extensity, I believe, is absolutely one of the most important extensions to have right away. Now again, all of this information you're gonna find in that agenda document. Uh, here's the section on post light reader that we talked about and then on page four managing chrome extensions here's the uh, information on extensity with a link to install that and how extensity works as well all right good stuff well let's keep on going so at this point now that we have a general idea okay i understand what extensions are i know where to find them i know how to install them i know how to use them i know how to pin them how to manage them what are some good extensions out there? And that's really what we wanna spend most of our time on is exploring that. So um, I have a Google spreadsheet that, again, as of the time of this recording, it's got about 150 recommended extensions in it. My guess is that number will continue to grow uh, as I come across more and as, as other folks share more uh, with me. But let's go ahead and take a look just to see what this, how the sheet is set up. Now you can get to this at any point, with a bit.ly link, bit.ly slash Kurtz dash ext list for extension list, but it's also just right there in the agenda document. So if you come here and give a click on that, that'll get you right into that as well. And so here's what we've got. Uh, I'll go ahead and make this a little bit larger so we can see that a little bit better. And so this is the spreadsheet. Now there's nothing too fancy about it. <laughs> it's pretty straightforward here. I just have it alphabetized. And what you're gonna see in the first column is the name of the extension. And the second column is the description, what it does. If you can't read the whole thing, you can click on it and see the rest of the description up in the top there. And then I have a link to go out to the Chrome Web Store so you can install it or learn more about it. Now, sometimes for some of these extensions, I have some additional resources, not all of them. And over time, I, I will definitely add more resources here. But for example, uh, there's quite a number of these that are like accessibility tools like Alpha Text or AT Bar or um, Beep or different tools like that. A lot of these are um, accessibility tools. So I, I, I have a whole resource document on tools to support all learners. And so following that link will take you out to that document where you can you know, access more resources on that particular topic. Uh, sometimes I have a specific blog post about it. You know, So if it's something that I literally did a post on, so uh, Avatar Maker, I think we're gonna talk about that one later here. I have an actual blog post where this was one of my EdTech links of the week. And so you can come here and you'll get some more information on Avatar Maker there as well. And so it's gonna be hit and miss down through here, but anytime I have something where I've got some additional support materials, that's what goes in that final column. And so there you go. That, that's the list. It's a, uh, well, looks like it's getting close to 160, uh, but we've got uh, uh, this uh, this ever-growing list of, uh, of recommended Chrome extensions. Um, we're going to pick some of these out to explore uh, throughout the rest of the session here, but I would encourage you, take a look through. You may find one that you are not aware of that might just meet the need that you have. And again, please share with me what you think should be added to this list so I can continue to learn from you as well. All right. So with that said, what are some uh, specifics uh, to take a look at here? So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to just run through some, I don't know, I've got 15 or 20 that I've pulled out of that 150. And we're not going to be able to spend a lot of time on each one of them with the time that we have here. We're going to move pretty quickly through them, so I apologize ahead of time. This is going to be quick. <laughs> We're going to try to hit each one of these really quick. Uh, I'll give you a quick overview, and if I can do a really short demonstration, I will do that, but I want to keep moving at a nice pace so we can get through as many of these as possible. I uh, definitely encourage you to explore more, though, for any that uh, you find to be valuable there. All right, let's clean up my tabs. That's the thing. Always got to do. <laughs> I end up getting way too many tabs open, so we're just going to clean up a 
few tabs. We'll go ahead and leave Dogo News up there because we're going to be using Dogo News uh, as an example for the first few that we're going to take a look at here. So let's go ahead and start running through some highlighted examples from the recommended uh, extension. Now, some of these are oldies but goodies. They've been around for a long time. Others are newer ones that I've just come across. They're either new to me or they're new in general. All right, let's get into this. So first up, uh, Google Dictionary. This is an extension that allows you to simply double click on any word you come across online and it will pop up a definition and a pronunciation of that word. Um, if you um, do uh, speak a, a different language, you can choose your language and you'll get a translation of that word when you double click on it. So this is great to help students if they are you know, struggling when they're reading, they come across a word they're not sure about, what a wonderful additional help for them. So let's pop on over here and we will turn on Google Dictionary. And notice, oh, you probably notice me do this a lot. I'll refresh my page a lot. Anytime I turn an extension back on that I had off, I typically will refresh my page so that it knows that I've got it turned on. So uh, I now have Google Dictionary uh, turned on. And now if I come down here and I come across a word that I didn't know, I could simply double click on that word. And again, it's going to pop that up. I can, you know, click on the button if I want to, you know, have it, you know, pronounce that word aloud. And then I can also read the definition that pops up there for it. If I want more information, I can click the more button that will run a regular Google search on that word to bring up more details. And of course, I can also come up here to the top and click on Google Dictionary and get a more detailed definition of that word in the drop down up there as well. All right, well, let's keep on going. Uh, next up, we've got Google Translate. So this is an extension that will allow you to select any text on the page, click the little Translate button, and it will pop up a, uh, a little box where you get a translation of that text into the language of your choice, and also can get pronunciations of that as well. So let's pop on over, and we will turn on Google Translate here. We'll refresh, we might as well turn off Google Dictionary while we're at it and we'll refresh the page. Now, with Google Translate, you do wanna set what your language is that you prefer to work in. So I will do a right click on the extension and go to options. And in this example, I'll leave it on Spanish, but you, again, you can pick from many, 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 many languages uh, that you want for the language you want the translation into. So if I come on down here and I uh, select a sentence, I can now get, the, I'll get this little pop-up here, this little translate button. If I click on that, that is going to give me the English and the Spanish translation uh, of that. Very, very nice. All right, well, let's keep on moving. Next up, we have Read and Write for Google Chrome. Now, I've talked a lot about this one in the past. Uh, we'll just barely touch on what it does here today. I've got a lot more resources you can explore uh, to learn more about it, but in essence, it's an accessibility toolbar. And so what it does is it allows you to have text read aloud. So it's a text-to-speech tool. Now, it does a lot more than that. There's a lot of other features, but that's one of the key features of it. Uh, that is included in the uh, the free version of Read and Write, and the the premium version is free for educators, so you can have access to all of the features in here. But the uh, text to speech is free for everyone, which is great. So let's pop back over here, and we will turn on Read and Write real quick. We'll turn off Translate, and we'll turn on uh, Read and Write. And I'm again, going to do the do the refresh. <laughs> Go ahead and refresh my page there. And now what I can do is I can click on the read and write button for the extension and it's going to pop up a floating toolbar. Now that floating toolbar has a lot of buttons on there but the one I'm interested in is the, is the play button. That's going to be the text to speech. Now there also is a settings button on the end if you do want to go in and choose what voice that you want it to be speaking in. There are so many voices to choose from uh, so I might pick like US Samantha as an example but as you'll notice there are just loads and loads that you can pick from. You can also change the speed of, of the speaking voice as well. So once again, I can come in here and select some text and just hit the play button. It is also the first time the food was assembled and cooked entirely by a 3D printing machine. In the past, 3D printed food has required an additional step, such as baking or frying. 
All right, and there we go. And again, there's a lot more you can do with read and write, but those uh, that is one of the most useful features. It works on web pages, but also works inside of Google Documents. So it's a great way to have a student have their own writing read back to them so they can check it for any errors. Good stuff there. All right, what's up next? How about Immersive Reader? Now, this is a similar tool, but this one's from Microsoft. And Immersive Reader does uh, text-to-speech as well, but it has a lot of other really neat features in there that can be helpful, uh, text preferences and grammar options and reading preferences. So let's take a quick look at how that works. So we'll head back up here and we will turn off Read and Write and we will turn on Immersive Reader. All right, now with Immersive Reader turned on, it behaves a little differently. There is an icon up here for Immersive Reader, but the easiest way to activate it, it's a little bit different. What you normally do is you start by selecting the text that you wanna work with, then do a right click on that text and then choose help me read this. That's the same Immersive Reader icon you see as the extension. When you click on help me read this, what it does is it grabs that text and it opens it up into a tab where it's just the text and and nothing else. If we come down and click on the play button. Over the years, scientists have used 3D printers for various products. It'll go ahead and start uh, reading that aloud. And there are two different voices. You can switch between male and female as well as the speed. Now, what's really neat about Immersive Reader are the additional features that are up here. So under the text preferences, we can increase or decrease spacing. We can change the font. We can change the color scheme, find something that works well for us, even change the size of the text. Under the grammar options, we can break the words into syllables as well as color coding and labeling the parts of speech. What a neat way to provide that additional support for our readers. And then under the the reading preferences, we can turn on a picture dictionary as well as an option to have a, um, a, a translation uh, feature on by word or for the whole document. Now, once I do that, that allows me any time that I click on something to be able to get a picture and a translation of it. Now, not everything has a picture. Sadly, they, don't, they do not have a cheesecake picture there, but many of the other ones, words will have an image associated with them. And when we're done again, we can just back out of there, back to our original document. All right, next up, voice in speech to text dictation. So this is going the other direction. The two we just looked at, read and write and immersive reader, that was text to speech. Now this is speech to text. So the idea behind this is you can simply speak and the extension will type up whatever you say. So this is great if you're filling out a quiz and you want to be able to speak your answer into it or you're writing an email and you just want to dictate it to it. Well, let's demonstrate this and we'll do it real quick here in Dogo News, show you how we could use this. So we'll come on back up here. And once again, we'll turn off Immersive Reader, but we will turn on our voice in and we'll go ahead and oh, did ask for some updated permissions. Totally fine. Excellent. And now you'll see I've got a little microphone button up here in the top. Anytime I click that, that's going to activate voice in, and then I can use it to have it type what I say. In this case, I'm just going to use the search uh, section. Let's say I want to search for something, uh, but instead of typing it up, I just want to speak my uh, words. So in this search box, I've clicked. And so up here, I'll now click on voice in voice typing dinosaurs. And there we go. I said the word dinosaurs. It typed the word dinosaurs for me. And now I could run a search on dinosaurs if I wanted to find, you know, uh, articles about dinosaurs. Very, very, very good. All right. So again, excellent tool for uh, text, for speech to text, for emails, for Google Forms, lots of other options there. Next up, MyBib, free citation generator. So there's a lot of citation tools out there. You may have one that you prefer other, over others. I've tested out quite a few. I really do like this one. I, I think it's got a lot of good things about it. It will generate a citation on any page you're on. Uh, it's got over 9,000 <laughs> different styles, but you're probably gonna go with APA, MLA, or Chicago, or something like that. Uh, you can then copy that citation and just paste it right away, or you can let it build up into a bibliography and then you can export that whole bibliography all at once to Google Docs or Word or Mendeley or Zotero or whatever you might use. So let's pop over here and we will turn off our voice in voice typing and then we will turn on 
the my bib and we'll once again refresh our page so it knows uh, <laughs> that we've got it turned on. So while I'm on this page, I can now just come up here and I can find the my bib extension, give a click on it. And when I do, it's going to ask, you know, what style do I want to use? I'll just leave it, leave it in MLA uh, version eight. And there we go. This is the citation for this particular page. Now, if I want to, I can just click on this. That'll copy it. I could now take that and I could paste that somewhere else. So, you know, if I had a Google Doc that I wanted to paste that into, I could come over to this Google Doc and I could just paste that right in. But what I think is really cool about this is that if you don't want to, uh, just copy and paste it into something else, you can save it. And when you click on save, it's going to drop it into a project. And so you see, I've got one called my first project. <laughs> you can make as many projects as you want, but here it is building this list of works cited here from these different ones that I have clicked on as examples there. Turns out they're both about cheese. I wonder, is this saying something about me? <laughs> I did not mean that to be the case. And then when you're all done, of course, you can go to the download option and and send that to Google Drive or Word or copy and paste the whole thing or send it over to other bibliographic managers there as well. Good, good stuff. All right, let's keep on going. Next up, Vocab Boost. Now, this is a fun one. Uh, this is an extension that will create a close reading test from the text on any web page. And so what that means is it's going to pull words out of the article and put boxes in their place. And then you can get a word bank where you drag and drop the answers back in. It's a really good way just to practice comprehension and vocabulary. Um, you can uh, go with the pre-made uh, you know, settings they have, uh, or you can create your own custom word list or even use other pre-made word lists that they have as far as which words should be pulled out and which ones should not. Let's try that out over here on our cheesecake article. Uh, so let's go ahead and we will once again turn off um, are my bib and then we'll come down and we'll turn on vocab boost and again I could leave multiples on I, I just I'm going to be going through like 20 of these <laughs> so I'm turning them off as we go or otherwise I would have way too many on by the time this was done all right so let's say I come in and I want to grab this text here and I want to make a close reading activity out of this if I come up and click on vocab boost here um, I can now go into my options here if I want want to you know tweak exactly what I want to create out of this for example I could say okay um, I want to have you know 10% of the text as blanks or a certain number of blanks I want to use allow certain word lists to be the ones that we are pulling from or I want to create my own custom word list of what I want to uh, allow to be pulled from up to 8,000 characters well I'm not going to change anything right now I'm just going to stick with what we've got and I'm going to give a right click click on that selected text. So notice again, I select the text, I right click on it, and then from Vocab Boost, I can now generate that uh, close reading um, activity. Now, if I do a random test, it really is random. And, and you might get some words that aren't all that applicable, like, you know, the word a and the, those probably aren't the best options. So you could choose make a less common test. That's going to avoid some of those really, really common words and go with things that are hopefully a little bit more appropriate. But I also remember I had checked to uh, allow these different pre-made lists, such as the NGSL test or the AWL test. Um, and so those word lists are options as well. We can just kind of see the difference between them. I would say at the least, I would probably say make a less common test. And if I do that, now you'll see it has pulled out some random words, but it's tried to avoid, you know, really, really common words. And at the top here, um, I like to click on show choices because that gives me the word bank itself. And then from that word bank, I can drag and drop things down into the actual close activity. Now, I did get some pretty common words. Though. I've got some buys and some is's and some it's. So let's try this again with one of those other word banks. Let's do this and we'll choose one of those pre-made word banks. We'll say, um, let's do the NGSL test. And so now 
if I come up and hit show choices, um, we're, you know, again, nope, still, <laughs> still getting some buzz in there. Uh, but again, I could uh, make my own custom one as well. Nevertheless, the point is what I'm going to do is I'm now going to drag these from the top down into these boxes here. Uh, I believe over is our first word here. So I would drag and drop that into there. When I'm all done, I can click check answers. I can also show the answers as well. So again, nice tool to be able to generate just a quick on the fly close reading activity from any article that I am working on. Now, speaking about vocabulary and learning, let's say it's a foreign language that you're trying to learn and you can use Toucan to help with that. So this is a really clever extension. If you turn this on, you choose the language you want to learn. And basically what it does is you just go about your business just reading websites as normal, and it will just randomly swap out certain words and phrases on pages with the language you're trying to learn. So while you're just going about your normal daily life, you're going to start seeing French or Spanish or whatever put into the articles that you're reading, and it will give you a chance to get comfortable with those in a natural setting. You can also play some mini games and do some tests to, to test yourself on that. So Let's try that out. So we'll come back on over here and let's go ahead and we will turn off our vocab boost and we'll turn on a toucan. Excellent. Now, again, as always, I'm going to refresh the page. <laughs> now, when I set up toucan, I told it that I was trying to learn French, I believe, is the uh, is the language that I went with in there. And you can always go in to Toucan and you can make adjustments. And I believe, yes, I chose I chose French. There's a lot of adjustments you can make in there. But notice as I scroll down on the page, look at that. I'm getting some words popping up that are highlighted here where they have translated them. So for example, here, water o uh, in French, I can come here and hear that. Ooh. And then I can also practice it if I want to, where it'll say, you know, type in the word for water, you know. And so, you know, I will go ahead. I know it's uh, E-A-U. Um, and I can check that out. Yeah, I got it right. Good job. Excellent. And so, uh, and, and again, this is just going to be in your normal daily life. As you are just working online, you're just going to start to see these words pop up in everyday usage. And you'll be able to be like, okay, time for me to, to learn. Ah, that is what a printer is. You know, and so a uh, neat way to be able to just integrate that into your day-to-day -day activities there. All right, and then I think the last one I'm gonna show with uh, uh, the Dogo News site before we switch over to something else is a Nimbus screenshot and video recorder. So Nimbus, ah, I love Nimbus. There's a lot of screenshot tools. And if you have a Chromebook, there's a screenshot tool built right into a Chromebook. But even, even then, I still really like Nimbus a lot, um, but it's sort of my go-to. It allows you to do a quick screenshot of anything on the screen, do some annotation, and editing to it. And then you can download it or copy and paste that resulting image uh, into a slideshow or put it wherever you want. You can even record video as well, which is nice. I don't use that feature as much. I typically use it for screen captures. So let's show that off really quick here. So let's go ahead and turn Toucan back off and we'll turn Nimbus back on. Refresh our page there. Awesome. And let's say I just, oh, for whatever reason, I needed to grab a screenshot of this text and this image here. So what I could do is go up to Nimbus. And from Nimbus, I can do the entire page or a selected area. I can select and scroll a delayed capture from trying to get like a, a menu that's popping up. So many possibilities there. I'm just going to say selected area. And so at that point, I basically am going to take and drag a box and then I can click the edit button and it will pop that up. There's the screenshot as quick as that. And there's a lot of editing things you can do with it here with, you know, arrows and boxes and text and things like that. I think the text arrow is kind of a cool one where you can like point to something. Whoops, I was pointing the wrong direction there. Uh, here, let me try that again from the... Uh, from the other way here. There we go. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> Sorry about that. There we go. <laughs> and then you can type in the text, you know, that that you want, you know, up here. And so you can, you know, very easily label things. It's, it's really nice. And then when you're done, you just hit done and that's it. There's your image. If you want to download it, you can download it. What's really neat about this though is 
you don't really even have to save it. You can just grab it from here and drag and drop it somewhere else. Like if you wanted to put this image into this document over here, I could just click, hold down, drag and drop and boom, there it is. It's in there. And so I'll use Nimbus when I don't want to save a copy of the image. I just want to grab it real quick and drop it into a slideshow or drop it into a document. Super, super easy to be able to use. And then you just don't even have to save the image after doing that. All right, let's keep on moving. So the next couple examples here are going to be demonstrating uh, using extensions inside of a Google document. Um, I'm, they don't have to be used in a Google document, but I'm going to demonstrate them in a Google document. And so I've got this George Washington report that I wrote up, nothing real. It's got some intentional errors in there, but we're gonna use that as we work through some of these. So one of the first ones is Draftback. This is an extension that allows you to view the version history of a document as if it's playing like a video uh, so that you can watch as a student uh, completed writing their document. Now, why is this useful? Well, this can be really helpful to be able to make sure, did a student actually write this essay or did they copy and paste it from somewhere else? I mean, especially with AI now, how easy it is for AI to generate an essay. We wanna make sure the student is actually doing the work. They are typing this document up. It's not just getting copied and pasted from somewhere else. So let's go ahead and turn on draft back and I will refresh my document so that uh, draft back is uh, there, give that a moment. There it is. And so now if I go up and click on draft back, it's going to let me go ahead and play a, a version of what it looked like when I was writing the document. And it's just using version history. It's just using what Google already has, but it's showing and I can speed this up much faster if we want. But you can see that I literally did write the document. This was not something where I was just copying and pasting it from somewhere else. I was actually typing up all this information. You can also switch over to a graph section here where it'll show you over dates and times all the times you worked on the document. Again, this goes a long way to help us be able to see, did a student actually work on their work or not? Good stuff. All right, next up, how about Beep? Beep is an extension that lets you record your voice and leave voice notes pretty much anywhere. Classroom, Gmail, Docs, Slides, Forms, Sheets, you can do just about uh, anything with it there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just as a quick example here, just leave a, a voice note inside of this document. So I'm gonna come on up here and we will turn off draft back and we'll go ahead and turn on Beep. All right, give that a refresh. And let's try this out. So let's say I just wanted to leave some verbal feedback for my student. Uh, maybe they were having some issues with, you know, forgetting to capitalize some words here. So maybe I come in and I select some text. I go over to the comment box and now I can click where it says voice comment. That's the beep button. When I give a click on that, I can now speak. Hey, this is Mr. Kurtz. Just want you to know uh, you need to watch out for uh, capitalization issues. In this case, the word United States is a proper noun, so the U and the S should be capitalized. And there we go. It's saving that. If I do want to hear it, I can, you know, play it back to make sure that it is actually, you know, that hey, this is Mr. Kurtz. Actually record. Uh, and then I can just click insert. It's going to drop that in there hit submit. And now that's going to be embedded right into that document for the student. So when they go to open up the document, they'll be able to click here to play that voice. Hey, this is Mr. Now, they don't have Beep installed. Uh, no worries. Instead, they'll see the link and they can click on the link, which will open up the Beep website. And then they can just play it on the website there as well. So either way, whether they hey, have Beep installed or not, very simple for them to be able to play back the recording afterwards. Good stuff. All right, next up, Equatio. Ah, I love Equatio. So Equatio is from the same folks that do read and write. And Equatio is an extension that makes it easy to add mathematical content or scientific content to docs and forms and slides and sheets and drawings and so, so, so much more. You can handwrite your math. You can type your math. You can take a picture of your math with your phone and import it in. Uh, basically, what it'll do is it'll turn it into an image and put that right into your document. So if we pop on over here and we go ahead and turn on Equatio, and we'll go ahead and turn off beep while we're at it there, give a refresh, 
Now, because I've done equatio, since I've uh, turned on equatio, now I have the equatio extension, give that a click, and what it's going to do is it's going to give me a toolbar down at the bottom here. And I can use this toolbar to enter math a whole bunch of different ways. To keep this simple, I mean, we could, again, we could type it in, we can draw it, we can speak it. I'll just draw it real quick. So, for example, I could do something like, you know, two-thirds plus one-half. And while I'm writing that in, it is trying to figure out what that math is. That looks good. I like it. I'll click insert math. Boop, boop, boop. It does its thing. And it will drop that right into the document there. So it's a great way to get math into forms and slides and documents and so many other things. All right, next up, ScreenPal. This is a record, a video recording tool that will allow you to record your screen and your webcam and your voice. Uh, it's free for up to 15 minutes at a time, and then you can just paste the link wherever you want to after you've made your recording. This is fantastic for providing feedback to students or for students to explain how they solved a problem, to give a speech. Uh, I use this a lot as a tech person to give people directions on how to do something. I'll get an email and I'll say, you know, it's going to be way faster for me just to record a quick video showing them how to do it rather than typing up a big email response. So let's say I just want to leave some feedback for my student using a tool like that. So what I'll do is head on up here and let's just turn off Equatio again and we'll go ahead and turn ScreenPal on. And once again, refresh the page. And now that we've got Screen Pal turned back on, you'll see a little Screen Pal button down at the bottom. I can give a click on my little Screen Pal button down there. If I want to turn on the camera, I can, but I don't have to show myself. That's fine. I've got my microphone turned on, and I'm going to say I want to record this browser tab with the George Washington report. That all looks good. Just go ahead and click on record. It's going to ask me which uh, tab I want to record. And there we go. It's going to count me down, and I can say, hey, this is Mr. Kurtz. Just want to give you some feedback on your report. And at this point, we'll pretend <laughs> that I'm going through and I'm giving them feedback. I could explain the different errors, things they need to fix. And so basically, it's recording my voice and the screen while I'm actually pointing out things and showing things. There also are some annotation tools if you want to click on the annotation section here. So you could actually draw on the screen while you're talking to the student to draw more attention to things as well. Now, when you're all done with that, you can just hey, this hit is stop. Just want to give you It'll give you a preview of it here, but if you're report, happy with it, click the we'll check mark to say that's good. And that's it. It's done. As simple as that. It has now copied that link to that video. And now all I have to do is come over here and put that somewhere in the document. So I might just put in a comment that says something like, here is my video feedback for you. And I could just paste that link right in. And there we go. When the student goes to uh, open up their document, they now can actually watch a video of me as I give them feedback there. Wonderful, wonderful tool. All right, just a couple more. Um, Sir Links a Lot is another useful extension if you work a lot in Google Docs, Sheets, Slides, and Drawings. It will create modified links for forcing a copy previewing, making a template, or downloading a PDF. So here's what I mean by this. Let's pop on over to our George Washington report, and let's go ahead and we'll turn on Sir Links a lot, and we will turn off Screen Pal. Uh, there we go. Okay, so let's say I wanted to make this available to somebody else, this particular document. Um, you may be familiar with the idea that if you grab the link to a document, you're allowed to change the tail end of it. Instead of being slash edit, you can make it like slash copy to force a copy. Or you can do like slash preview to give them a preview of it. Or you can use the template option to make a template out of it. Well, sometimes you might forget how do I do that? What's what's the change I need to make? Well, here's the beauty. If you've got Sir Links a lot, you don't have to worry about it. Just go up and give a click on Sir Links a lot and it goes, okay, this is your current address. What do you want me to do with this? Do you want to do a forced copy link? Click that. There we go. Copy. How about a preview? Perfect. How about making it into a template? Excellent. How about offering it as a PDF download? Perfect. Whatever the case. So if I say, you know what? I want this to be a forced copy link. I can say, let's do a forced copy link. And now I can either copy that link or go to open it in a new tab. And you'll see, there we go. It wants me to make a copy of it. 
Excellent. Or if I say, let's do this as a template, we could now take a look at that link and it will give you a preview of the document and let people have the option to use it as a template. So this is a great way to be able to get those uh, those links for forcing copies or uh, previewing or making a template without having to remember how to change that yourself. Now, of course, don't forget, you still need to share the document so it's not private. This will just give you the appropriate links after you've done so. All right, well, I think that's the last of the ones that were related to a document. I've got just a couple here on the tail end now that we're going to go ahead and run through, and I'll make these quick. Uh, we've got a we have tools like Avatar Maker. This is an extension that lets you build your own custom avatar. You can choose uh, you know, all sorts of facial features there and then download the avatar that you create. Um, and this can be great for creating you know, autobiographical images or creating characters for a story. Uh, Unhook, this is a great extension to clean up YouTube. So if you want to be able to play a video in class, but you don't want all of the distracting elements uh, around that video, Unhook allows you to clean up your page. Let's go ahead and we'll turn that on and I'll show you what that looks like. We'll turn officer links a lot and we'll go ahead and we will turn Unhook on. And let's just head over to YouTube real quick. And let's say, I don't know, we wanted to watch a video from, you know, Crash Course Kids. So we'll put in Crash Course Kids. And uh, we're going to be showing, you know, a science video here. Sure, you know, maybe uh, let's pick one of these quick ones well, as an there. example. Welcome maybe to Crash we want to learn kids. about food I'm chains, Sabrina, you know. I'll so uh, I'll pause this for a moment when that pops up there. Now, normally you're going to get suggestions on the side. Um, you would typically have comments down below. In this case, the comments are turned off for this video, but normally we'd have comments down there, the description, all sorts of stuff. Well, here's the thing. If you've got Unhook, you can turn Unhook on and then you can hide as much or as little as you want. Now, I've got all of the sliders turned on, so basically it's hiding everything except for the video itself. So when I bring this up in class, I can play this video now, and there's going to be nothing else around it. And if I go you know, back you know, here and I pick another video, uh, when I head to the next one again, Quick. Uh, everything else is going to be hidden. Just the video is going to play. Now, at any point, I can come back up, turn off on hook, or I can adjust individual things that I may want hidden or not, and everything else will always come back at that point. All right, next up, custom cursor for Chrome. Well, I've actually been using this the entire session. <laughs> As of you knows, my mouse uh, has not been the normal uh, uh, cursor arrow. It's been a little a googly one. Uh, custom cursor for Chrome is a really neat uh, extension that allows you to pick custom cursors. Now, this could just be good for accessibility. I have a hard time finding my cursor sometimes, and I turn into a cursor <laughs> as I'm trying to find it. So uh, the idea is you can use this extension. Come up and give a click here. And they've got a whole bunch. I think they've got like, I don't know, thousands, 8,000 different uh, cursors you, you can choose from. Um, they've got some common ones here. You can go to the more cursors to get more. You can upload your own. So I could say, oh, I just want a red cursor. So I could just change this to red. And now I've got a nice red cursor that would be easy to see. Now the, the Google one, I uploaded that myself. I had found some pictures that I thought looked good and I uploaded those. So I've got the two different Google images here for when I'm uh, using that. Good stuff. All right, we're down to the last couple examples here as we wrap this up. Uh, the library extension, this is an extension that helps you know when a book you're interested in is available at your local library so that maybe you don't have to purchase it. You can just check it out. So this works on websites like Amazon and Goodreads and, Go and Google Books. So what you do, let me turn on the extension here. We'll turn on our library extension. There we go. And let's just head out to Amazon. Let's say we go on out to Amazon and we're searching for, you know, John Green's book, The Anthropocene Reviewed. I've actually, I actually have this book. It's a, it's a great book. But let's say I come in and I'm on Amazon and I want to think about purchasing, you know, this particular book. Well, because I have the library extension turned on, look what's happening. Over on the side, I'm getting this pop-up over here where it is searching my local libraries. Now, I live close enough to 
several counties. I straddle Medina County and Summit County. So I, I've got a library card at both of them. And I can see, oh, there's a lot of copies available. And I can just go ahead and borrow those right from the library instead of necessarily purchasing that book. And so this is going to work on a lot of web pages. When you come across a book online, it will automatically run a search to let you know if that's available at your libraries. And then this is it, last one, final one, <laughs> Limit. Uh, this is an extension I chose because it's a good one for digital well-being. This is an extension where you can set how many minutes per day you want to allow yourself to be on certain sites. Um, and then once you have reached that limit, once you've been on that site, for that amount of time, you can no longer go to that page <laughs> for that day. Uh, so you can say, okay, you know, I, I'm on Reddit, you know, too much. So I'm going to give myself, you know, 60 minutes. That's it. You know, one hour a day, that's it, or 30 minutes or whatever the case might be. And then it'll actually, as you get close to the end of the time, it'll count down and let you know so that you can wrap up your time on that. And then if you try to go to the site for the rest of the day, it'll just take you to a page that says, sorry, you have used up <laughs> your time for that page today. All right. Well, that was a lot of content. I know a lot of information there, but I hope that you feel more comfortable with extensions as to uh, you know what they are, how they work, how to find them, how to install them, how to manage them. But I also hope you've been inspired by some of the example extensions that I shared here today. Now, as a reminder, everything we saw here today can all be found at bit.ly slash kurtz dash ext. That'll get you to that document where you'll see all of the stuff we've gone through as far as, you know, finding and installing and managing extensions, but also uh, the link out to my 150 recommended extensions and then the ones that I highlighted here today with some details on those. Now, again, I want to learn from you. So please do uh, contact me, whether you just want to drop me an email or DM me or whatever, and let me know what extensions did I miss? What else should I add to this? Or use the sharing document that we talked about as well. That's always in the document as well. And you can add content in there too. Well, I want to thank you guys so, so, so very much for taking the time to learn with me here today. It's been a pleasure learning with you. And I look forward to learning from you in the future as well. Take care, everybody. And for all the rest of my educational technology resources, be sure to visit my site at controlaltachieve.com, follow me on Twitter, subscribe to my YouTube channel, sign up for my email newsletter, and check out my book, Control Alt Achieve, Rebooting Your Classroom with Creative Google Projects. Thanks so much, and take care.